Hello everyone. Uh, we're going to go over some advanced Rhino skills. Um, first off, we're going to go over Cage Edit. So for Cage Edit, it's creating kind of a morph box that you can kind of free transform actual geometry uh, through. So this involves actually having a pretty heavy model in the end, but it can be useful for making more organic shapes or simply just modifying a simple solid to actually fit within some sort of parameter. So for now, let's just start off with the sphere. Put it in the middle. And let's hit our right scroll button, change it to shaded mode. And now let's type in cage. Now let's just hit bounding box. And that just means it's gonna create a cage around it to the exact size that it's using. These other options can be used for whatever situation you're in. So if we hit bounding box, let's hit world, and let's give this a six count for the Y, a six count for the X, six count for Z, and these are gonna be our modification points. And the degrees is how organic uh, or curvy it'll be. If you do a three degree, it'll have three degrees of freedom. Um, two degree will have two and a half degrees and one degree will be more of a faceted shape. So I'm all right with all these amounts, so let's hit right click, and that creates a box for us. Now, let's type in cage edit. So it says select captive objects. So within our cage, we have a captive sphere, and hit enter. Now let's select control object, which would be our cage. And we can just hit enter once again. And now we're stuck with all these points around our geometry. Now what we can start to do if we have gumball on, we can select points and simply just start moving them in whatever direction we like. And we can even select a cross section and start to curve it and twist it using our rotate and we can also move up and sometimes it it'll stall like this but that just means there's more history being involved within each one of these geometries that's why we see more iso curves so it's making the surface way more complex but you're getting the the shape you wish this can be helpful for simply sculpting or making some sort of really custom shape. And if we want to get out of this, we just simply hit exit. And again, we can delete our cage and we end up with some sort of organic shape. Now this one's pretty complex, so what we can do is just select the surface, rebuild. Um, let's just put in 13 for the U, 13 for the V, leave it at 3 and delete the current. We end up with just about the same shape with a little bit less resolution than what we had, but at least it's easier to pan around. Next, let's just go over taper quickly. So let's start off with the new shape. Let's delete the one we have. Let's do a sphere once again. Now for taper, what we do is just type in taper. Let's select the bottom of the geometry we're gonna taper. Double click on our perspective and let's go to an elevational view. Scroll this control axis up, holding shift. Bring out your uh, Y axis or your X axis and simply start moving the geometry in. You can get a kind of a preview through here. We're able to make this more of an egg shape through the taper command. Now, let's use the twist command on the same geometry. Type in twist. Again, we can use this from the perspective move, uh, view now. So we grab an axis, bring it out perpendicular or whichever way, and bring out our guide axis. And now if we just start twisting, we'll get a twisted tapered sphere. So 
Again, this geometry is much more complex than what we started with, but hitting rebuild once again, we can kind of start to calm it down slightly. So that goes over KJedit.